Hey, you know, I'm from South Dakota. I'm from a place that most people consider a flyover state. I'm from a place that most people never get to go, right? And I don't know that you can't do this stuff. Right. So why can't you just you do run it? right in? Yeah, just do it. What, what's the worst that could have said? Right. Donald no. Trump, Ronald Trump wouldn't call me back. Huh? Now, now, whether you like him or not, I can talk to the president. It's Mind Your Business with Jeffrey Hazlett and Yitzhak. <laughs> it's amazing. I, I can't even believe we got this horse in the studio. It's like, <laughs> you've been cowboy. I got to be able to do it right uh, here in New York. Great. I would love to be able to ride my horse in New York. Uh, That'd sick. be awesome. Yeah. But would you get into trouble? How, imagine, I could just I see d- you going through the battery tunnel. Going- <laughs> oh, yeah. I'd do it in a heartbeat. What the heck? It'd freak the horse out. My horses would freak out. My horses don't have shoes or anything. You know, like they're, they're real yeah, natural they're ponies. They're real, yeah. yeah. No, well, they're horses. I mean, yeah. they've been living for millions of years. I just let them natural. Once, <laughs> once a year, I comb them out. I have to catch them first. You know, that's a bad thing. When I have to go when I go back to the that's ranch. So you, and you usually record that on Facebook. Yeah. That, that, oh, yeah. That, that's where we oh, see yeah, those. Yeah. yeah. Right now, we got a lot of flooding back in a home yeah. in South Dakota. Um, the river's way up over the bank. It's halfway up our, our yard. Our yard's about two and a half acres. Um, mm-hmm. I own about 40 there, but uh, where we live and, you know, right? Yeah. Big Sioux River. Is flooding. it receding? What's the latest? As of? No, no. It just peaked. It's peaking. So it's not as bad as it was about two weeks ago, but, you know, six years ago. Wow. It was really bad. You know, I own a bridge, as you know. Uh, I own this oldest bridge in South Dakota, and everybody always asks. They said, "What happens when the you know if that bridge ever falls down?" I said, "Well, then I own a dam." You know, so there you go. You know, so you got you got you got to look on the bright side of this things, folks. You know, uh, it's a, that's what happens in business all the day. You know, people talk about that. They always say, "Oh, you got to fail fast." No, you got to win fast. All right, let's right, be clear. We always talk about that. Yeah, you, right. you, everybody fails. I fail all the time. People ask me, "What's your biggest failure?" I say, "I don't know. I haven't done it yet." Meaning, there's a right. big failure. I mean, I fail all the time. I failed today a couple times. Um, on you know stuff that didn't work, work out the way I was oh, I was hoping to close a three million dollar deal. I got fifty grand. Well, fifty grand. You know, fifty grand is nothing to, to, to right. shake his dick right, at, right? right? And right. so I like fifty, 50 grand is good. Fifty grand was better than you know something else. You know, so better than a no. So you know, those are the things that you kind of you just gotta overcome them all the time. So yeah, take take whatever's a bad thing, turn it into a good thing, and keep moving. Such great advice. Uh, we have to go back to a point that we ta- touched on earlier, which uh, I understand you have a lot to uh, to comment on, and that is pick a side. Yeah. Now, of course, you talk about in the book, have a cadence, be true to form, but sometimes that may put you at odds. Like, you know, listen, we President Donald Trump, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, he's, he's running the country, but you have, you know, 50% on one side, 50% on the other side. You actually have a great story. How did you get in touch with Trump back yeah, well, when you were in Kodak? Back when I was Kodak, I was looking to sell our inkjet printing uh, device. So we had an inkjet printer, and I was like, how can we get this out there? How can we get the story that ours is a better product because our model is different than the other mm-hmm. guys? We, we sold a fair product for the fair price for the printer and then half price for the ink, and you still made a kill. We still made right. a killing. Right. But so I said, how can we get the story out? So we're brainstorming around a big conference table, much like the table we're sitting right here. Right. And um, and I said, hey, why don't we put it on a Celebrity Apprentice? And team said, that's a great idea. Let's put it. No, no, we'll put it on the Apprentice. It okay. was Celebrity Apprentice didn't exist yet. Okay. And so I said, yeah, let's let's do that. Somebody call Trump. Let's let's see what we can do. And they go, well, how do we do that? I said, just pick up the phone and call him. And they go, well, we'll have to find the agent. So I said, oh, that's ridiculous. So I just picked up the phone and right on the conference phone, dialed an information number to get out and di- asked for New York City. And I was living in, Ro- we were in Rochester at the time. And I said, can I have a number for Donald Trump? And they said, well, we don't have a Donald Trump. We have the Trump organization. I said, well, give me that number. It's got to be him. So uh, they gave me the number. I called, receptionist answered. And I said, hi, I'm Jeffrey Hazlett, Chief Marketing Officer of East Ben Kodak. I'd like to speak to Mr. Trump. And they said, one moment, I'll put you through to his secretary. Put me through and a, a gal named Rhoda, who's still working for him today, by the way. Wow. And so Rhoda answers the phone. Uh, she became a good friend. And uh, here in New York, Trump Trump Tower, the whole bit, you know. And this was back in 2000, and I think, uh, eight. Mm. And I said, uh, hey, R- Rhoda, Jeff Hazlett, I'd like to speak. I'm the chief marketing officer of Eastman Kodak. I'd like to speak to Mr. Trump. She said, I'm not, he's not available. I said, you know, I figured that. I said, you know, but can I, can I leave a message? Would he get back to me? And she goes, it depends on the message. I said, well, here's my message. And so I said, would you take this down and make sure he gets it? And she said, yeah. I said, tell him I got I have to spend a couple million dollars in the next 30 minutes. <laughs> and, if, and if he doesn't call me the back in the next 30 minutes, I'm going to spend it with somebody else. And I'm okay with that, but is she, you got 30 minutes. Here's my telephone number. And, and again, let me be clear. If you don't call me back in the next 30 minutes, I, I'm going to move to the next person on the, on, on the list. And I said, by the way, we've taken two minutes. You got 28 minutes left. 
And then I hung up. <laughs> and so that's what my, my message was. You got to be very good at your ass, God, right? Great. Isn't that true? Such a great story. Yeah, but it, it, but it's true. You got to be very good. And, you got to be right. crisp. You got to have a crisp, hook. You say know, it out. And, and, and you got a deadline. Very clear. Yeah. And very clear. The yeah. deadline, deadline built deadline. in. Good. So what happened? Within 10 minutes, I got a call back and it's Donald Trump on the phone. <laughs> and we're still around our conference room. I put him on the speakerphone. And he goes, Donald Trump. I go, Donald, it's Jeff Hazel. And it's good to meet you. Good to meet you. And I, we got to talk and I said, I'd really like to put my product on your apprentice show. He goes, well, I got bad news. Um, we're not doing the show. I said, that's too bad. I really had my heart set on that. It would really, really be good. And then he started telling me about his golf tournaments and trying to sell me on something right, else, which right, you would expect right. from Donald of Trump. Course. I mean, he's a salesman. That's yeah. what he does. Yeah. Very good at it and uh, extremely good, just you know, top of the line. And I said, no, that really doesn't fit for us. And then, we, and then he goes, well, it's too bad. I said, you know what? It would be a great idea if you ever did a celebrity version of that. And he goes, well, that's a heck of an idea. And so we got to talking, and we spent a couple minutes on it. And he goes, you know, do you know Mark Burnett? I said, I don't know Mark Burnett. He goes, he's a producer. He said, if, if, if I got them to do the show, would you do the show? I said, we'd do the show. We'd, we'd sponsor that. And he said, well, here's, here's Mark Burnett's phone number. And he gave me Mark Burnett's phone number. I, I immediately hung up the phone, um, said we'd get together next time we're in New York. Um, and then I called Mark Burnett. By the way, it was about 930 in the morning, maybe 1030 in the okay. morning, which you okay. think I, East Coast time. I then called Mark Burnett. It was his cell phone and woke him up. Oh, that's right. It's, he's, 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 he's West Coast. He's in Malibu, right? Ouch. So so anyway, I got through to him. Here he is. I'm talking. It's 6.50 in the morning. It's 6.50 in the morning, whatever, whatever it was. Yeah. And um, and he answered the phone. We talked. And literally 30 days later, we were doing the show. That is great. Just, you know, great. I, you know, I'm from South Dakota. I'm from a place that most people consider a flyover state. I'm from a place that most people never get to go. Right, I don't know. You can't do this stuff. Right. So why can't you just you do run it? right in? Yeah, just do it. What? What's the worst could have said? Right. Donald no. Trump. Donald Trump Same. wouldn't call me back. Huh? Now, now, whether you like him or not, I can talk to the president. Right. All right. You know, he's a friend. Now, I still think he's bat. You know, whatever, crazy sometimes. Which we, I think, most of us would agree that there's a little bit of that. But you know, quite frankly, you see the news over the last week. Right. He's actually doing pretty that's good. Right. That's I mean, right. I mean, he's been. By the way, and that's the key to his success. That's how he gets stuff he, done. They, he loves they, it. If you remember back, and I, I tell people about this, he'd always create a controversy right before the season started. There was always a Miss Universe that was getting in trouble right before the season right. started. That's planned. Yeah, that's it's planned. it's all planned. part of the game. And all so he's it. going, or or he's going to say. Uh, that mosque they're going to build near Ground Zero, they can't do it. I'm going to buy the building. Remember right. that? Right. So, he, that's right. so he'll create the controversy to grab the headlines. And that's what he's doing today. He owns the, I mean, it's 24 yeah. hours a day, yeah. seven days a week. Obama never had that. Clinton right. never had that. Right. He owns it all. Right. Whether, whether it's good, bad, or ugly. Right. Okay. Let's be clear. Um, you know, that's just the way he operates. He doesn't mind all that negative stuff. By the way, a shout out to C Suite. Um, David Meerman Scott. Oh, yeah. So he spoke at Boston C Suite. Yeah. And he spoke about, and he explained it so well. It was during the presidential campaign, he talked about newsjacking. And he news said- Newsjacking, that's right. Guess who mastered newsjacking? Donald Trump. Yeah. By the way, newsjacking is a term that David Merriman Scott came yeah, up that, with. that's his term. And it's his thing. He's done very well with it. It's it's a great concept. David is just a bright guy. I know, we, I, And I got met David through his brother, Alan Scott, who used to be uh, an executive at uh, Dow Jones. And, and uh, wow. I think he's still there. I don't even, I can't remember. I haven't seen Alan for a while. But I met him. He was a CMO. And I said, Alan, that's your brother? Hey, I'd like him to speak at my conference. And that's how I got David. And Amazing. David and I become friends. And look, David's, uh, you're, you're going to see, is it the, is it the, Big anniversary of landing on the moon or the moonshot? Oh, yeah, sure. 69. It's, it's, it's coming up. It's coming it's 69, up. 69. So, this so is he, the... he's behind that entire movement. Wow. And he owns some term or around that that he's doing, and he's doing that. So watch. It's amazing to see him craft it. He That's told right. the story of that. There's a group at the National Speakers Association it's called be the 50 Years. It's 50 Years. It's a 50 year reunion. That's, that's, right. that's what's going on. And he said, I'm going to do this. And I thought, you are flipping brilliant. You know, I love, that's what's so cool about these kinds of networks like the Hero Club or the C-Suite Network mm -hmm. is that you get to be in the presence of people like that. You know, where either we're curated, other people curate it, but you just, you know, my whole life is like a Forrest Gump moment. You know, I keep meeting these people, you know, Forrest Gump always met right. these famous people all the way through. And and uh, that's kind of feel I, how I feel my life has always been that way. And um, and so, you, you know, like uh, David spoke at this thing called the Million Dollar Speakers Group which is all these you know, big speakers, right. major right. speakers, is a very small handful of people that earn greater than a right. million dollars just in keynoting right. or speaking. And David was speaking to that group um, uh, one day, and he said, this is what I'm going to do. And I went, oh, David, you're brilliant. You're brilliant. This is awesome. 
We only have a couple of minutes left. We have to talk about one of the key buzzwords today, which really it's not a new buzzword, but for some reason today it's just storytelling. <laughs> How important is storytelling? Does it does a does a CEO really have to craft a story and know how to narrate it well? What's your take on that? Well, if you want to be valuable, if you if you <laughs> want to have good value in the company that you yeah. have in terms of business and make it worth more, right. yeah, yeah, you need Who to doesn't? be able to good to tell the story. You need to be able to tell the story so people believe it. We learn through storytelling. We learned that in the Bible. We learned that in right. in the books that we have. We 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 aspire to listen to great storytellers up on stage right. or on radio or in on movies. We love a good story right. because we're visual and we're very auditory people. So why wouldn't you want to craft a great story for your business? Why wouldn't you create a great narrative for your business and then everybody can tell the story and everybody plays a role in the story? Right. So yeah, without question, you want that. So I think it is important for a CEO to do it. You don't have to do it, you know, as good as someone else, but you have to be able to get the basics down so that you can show you the value. You know, you used to be able to sell yourself based on certain attributes and things and, and promises, but you, you you can't do that today. You have to really live the story. You have to live the narrative of what your business is. Again, getting back to a brand is nothing but a promise delivered. Wow, well, man, that time flies. I know, you uh, put the quarter in, you get to go for the full right. ride here on this show. <laughs> Mind your business right here. So Jeffrey, as we close out, what final takeaway would you like to share with the listeners of Mind Your Business? Hey, an idea without implementation is air. So you got to get it done. So you got to do it. You got to deliver. In the end, you got to deliver. That's, that's the thing I'd take away today. I love the honor of interviewing C-level executives and sharing their great advice and perspective on Mind Your Business. I'd love to get your feedback. Post it in the comments below and subscribe. You'll never miss an edition of Mind Your Business.